Okay, great. All right, so I will pass the mic over to Willem and Jesse to speak about their work um, in support of the Texas Tech Youth Mappers chapter, as well as their own network-focused projects. Excellent, I can just screen share, correct? Yep. Let's see. Then... Is that working? Yeah, looks. Um, we're seeing your presentation notes. Can you switch it? How do I? Probably display settings. At display the top. settings. Well. Oh yeah. Yep. Looks perfect. Does work? Mhm. Mm All right, Jesse's first. So whenever you want to take it away, bud. You're muted, Jesse. Sorry, all right. Hello everyone, my name is Jesse Garcia and I am accompanied by Willem Lee Stockton and we are here to present to you the Lubbock Compact Project, which is a project we've done in our local community, which Willem will tell you more about. Excellent. For those of us who's not from Lubbock, Lubbock Compact is, was started by some faculty at Texas Tech, Nick Bergfeld. Um, and it was basically he tried to quantify some of the historic and institutional uh, disparity along racial and class lines here in Lubbock. Unfortunately, like according to census data, there's still like a third of like white people would have to move into new neighborhoods to equalize out the racial disparity. And they really tried to address some of this and quantify some of it. And we thought it was a perfect opportunity where youth mappers could partner with them, specifically our chapter, and we could host a mapathon to try to address some of this. Um, you can see there, their mission statement is kind of in line with ours. It's to empower the Lubbock community through citizen education, civic engagement, and public policy research and advocacy. Um, yeah, Jesse, we'll tell you more about our mapathon. For our mapathon at TTU Geography Youth Mappers, what we have done is that we've taken this project and make sure it is a community driven program to map out the missing features in Lubbock. And in total of all the six council districts within Lubbock, there are about 54 miles of unpaved, unmapped roads, which specifically in this project right here, the Lubbock Compact project, we focused on district councils one and two, which was of course the eastern portion of Lubbock. And with this, we switched, we Hosted this on our Twitch TV, Twitch TV slash TTU Geography, and it was our three day virtual mapathon to where anyone could join. It was not exclusive to Texas Tech students, and it was not exclusive to just people in Lubbock, Texas. Anyone could join. And at the very beginning of each little session we've had of our mapathon, we've gone over for about 15 minutes for a tutorial on what to do and how to use OpenStreetMap on the Hot Tasking Manager which Willem and I were the project managers for. And Willem can tell you a little bit more about that one. So particularly, why do we choose these two areas? Uh, this is as we, East Lubbock, it's traditionally like older and traditionally poor and more diverse, like a neighborhood of color, as you could say. Um, and unfortunately, they've lacked in, in critical infrastructure and you can read more about that from Lubbock Compact. But as Jesse said, there was many roads that were still un unmapped, so many buildings that were still unmapped, even an open street map on that side of it. And like, they're still unsure about some of where the fire hydrants were and issues uh, along those lines. So we have like systemic institutional problems. That is a perfect application for open source mapping and a collaborative mapping effort. And so we really reached out to our community. and was like, hey, come map your neighborhood, map out your area. Everybody's an expert somewhere and you can really contribute to the map. Um, and Lubbock is kind of big, so we divided it up in this phase one. We just focused on districts one and two, as you can see here on the map. And as I mentioned, we think those are the most critical ones. After talking with Nick Bergfeld, it was where we decided to uh, focus our efforts for our mapathon. And Jesse will tell you a little bit of our impact. As for our impact, well, the reason why we used OpenStreetMap was because it was open source data. And it, these open, open source data could then be used, for example, for first responders to use this new data that we've implemented and mapped out to help navigate the eastern side of Lubbock. So that way, rather than the first responders having a slower response time to get to where the danger is, 
now that we've mapped out the unpaved and roads and the less developed areas, the first responders can quickly get to there in a timely manner. And working with the Lubbock Compact Project, in our next little phases, as Willem mentioned before, we're looking to use this data for road surface trafficking so that way we can use it for more than just mapathons, but they actually use it to GIS data so we can then share it with the city of Lubbock for them to make changes accordingly to what we have mapped on. And as for this mapathon itself, it's still ongoing, but it is almost finished. There are still uh, a little bit of squares that need to be mapped, but for the most part, there are still squares that just mainly are done and just need to be validated and some are in the validation process and being finished. And as well, working with the Lubbock Compact projects, we are looking into more projects with them, including phase two, meaning that it won't be just district councils one and two that we worked on for mapping missing buildings or roads. <clears throat> but in addition, we hope to take on all six council districts eventually once we are done with this specific project for one and two. And it's because of this that students who have come and joined our Twitch stream and our Mapathons, they've expressed interest in joining our chapters. I know personally myself, I've gotten emails from students saying that they thought this was a very cool thing that we were doing and they were very interested to join our Youth Mappers chapter. And this is a great outreach perspective because of course, as Willem stated, we are a very small chapter and we're always looking to get new students to Basically, we pass on the torch and they can further expand our TTU Geography Youth Mappers chapter. And Willem will tell you more about that. So what's really interesting to me is that the success of our project and OSM allows for some pretty sophisticated tracking of that. Um, of the mapping we saw, like outreach is important to us as a Youth Mappers chapter and 95% of the mapping that was done in Lubbock Beginner Mappers, 67% of that had less than one month of experience Many of them were first time mappers to the mapathon our, ourselves. This resulted in over a thousand change sets. And those of you who aren't familiar with OpenStreetMap, every time you hit save to the edit to your map, that's a change set. So there were over a thousand saves to the map, which resulted in more than 17,000 total edits to the map. Uh, 15,000 buildings were added in Lubbock, and 285 kilometers of roads were added in Lubbock through a total of 57 co contributors. And this is like staggering when you consider Lubbock was already pretty effectively mapped and pretty well mapped in this. And we are really picking up some of the missing pieces and again, focusing on those two areas that uh, that were inadequately mapped. And so like we were really thrilled that we, I mean, we put 17,000 uh, edits on the map, 15,000 houses were put on the map essentially. And it was kind of a big deal to us. Um, here's that map we talked about. There's still some squares that need to be done. This is as of last night, but we made significant progress towards the areas we were mapping. Also of note, you can see some of these statistics. And you know, I'm a data nerd. I kind of like this kind of stuff. You can see over the course of time by the note percentage, essentially, um, how much was tracked out and how much was taking place. We're just over 65% of it is taken care of, but we do need some help with validation. So anybody who has some experience with OpenStreetMap, we would appreciate some help with that. Um, just a little shameless pitch right there. Um, a little bit more about our our live stream because we're trying to change this and take like the virtual mapathons and keep the spirit of the old mapathons, you know, the party vibe. And so we've we've taken it to Twitch. And we on our first night we had a four hour stream with eleven hour average viewers throughout that time. We maxed out at twenty four viewers. This next statistic is interesting to me because unique viewers that's fi means fifty people came and if they came and went five times, they only got counted once in this. So essentially like fifty people attended the first night of our three day mapathon. 11 people are asking questions in chat, and we had 90 uh, total views for that. Uh, you can see this next kind of a map of how it went through the night. I mean, Twitch allows a lot of interesting data statistics and help you out with um, tracking your mapathons, seeing what content you need to trim out, seeing where you need to improve, and seeing how you can really refine the process of your mapathons. And as we move towards a more hybrid format, um, we intend to like keep the virtual broadcasting going on while we uh, have our in-person mapathons going on. And you can come check us out at Twitch TTU Geography. And with that, we will move on to Jesse's network capstone project. Okay, so for my networking capstone project, I have chosen to undertake a big task of utilizing uh, Youth Mappers Wiki and making essentially a template for all Youth Mappers chapter to fill out and update the information. And I will say that on the next slide. 
Oh, sorry, Jesse. So why did I make this template in the first place? Well, there are many chapters in Youth Mappers that have yet to update their information on it. And with this template, which I've added, it has many information such as, you know, what was the start time of your activity? So for example, mapathons in our case, when is the start time of this mapathon? When is the end time? What is our goal? And what specific hot tasking manager task we created or what we will be mapping on? Or perhaps even a section to where if we are choosing to collaborate with another youth mappers chapter, I also have that attached in the template as well. And there are also very other vital points of information for points of contact and how we can get in touch to just make sure it also shows that youth mappers chapters are being very active. And, you know, there have been many chapters that youth mappers <coughs> question of whether they're still active or not. So I personally believe with this template, it can make the organization and the flow of the work very much more organized and in a very efficient manner, which on the next slide, it allows us to have a very significant impact. So as I've stated before, not only does this allow for lots of organizations for all the chapters that are needed to, whether it be new chapters or old chapters, it also shows that with more activity, it also shows that perhaps we can make more collaboration with between Youth Mappers chapters. Maybe some new chapters can reach out to older chapters that have a history and a well-maintained record of these activities and mapathons and reach out to them and get some points, some tips, and perhaps even more collaboration streams, which we've had experience with that in the past. And overall, just in general, it is very important that we keep a good record so that way, as stated before, all the Youth Mappers chapters are able to keep a nice file on them to have a history, a track record of looking at all of the activities that they've done, whether it be mapathons, using hot OSM, or anything that is needed. So I think it goes a little bit a long way to making sure all of our chapters and Youth Mappers to be organized and show that we are a very sophisticated community here and we are a very much a community that thrives and relies on other people to help us all as well as is all mainly open source data we use. Excellent. So now uh, a little bit about my network one. Uh, fun with field papers. Uh, I, so I have kind of a background in biology and me and my daughter like go on hikes, go on walks. And I like take notes and rigorous field notes and atlases and stuff like that about local ecology and stuff like that. So when Adele and Rory and Natalie showed me how to use field papers, I was just staggered by it and immediately fell in love with it. For those of you who don't know what it is, a really quick crash course. You basically can print off an atlas anywhere in the world. You take it in the field with you and you scan it with the QR code. It geolocates it and puts it exactly where it needs to go as a base layer within OpenStreetMap. And you can toggle between the two of them. And it's really effective. Um, the purpose of my network focus was to write a concise tutorial, essentially like an instructable or a PDF of field papers for new chapter members. And also to package this in a brief, compelling and interesting narrative. Um, when we were assigned the assignment, I actually took my daughter and my wife out to a park that they had been to several times. My wife played in that park 20 years ago. And we went through there, we mapped out all the missing features, and I took note of local ecology. And since then, we've gone back, we've mapped out the tree species in there. I'm interested in local green spaces. Again, with Lubbock Compact, we're looking at disparity of ecology even. And so it's really quickly, we took it out and we were able to note all the tree species within this park within about 30 minutes on a separate trip. And, you know, I'm a nerd. I had fun doing that with my friend. Um, and so I'm just, that's kind of this little narrative that we're packaging all this in. And it's also going to include multimedia resources to aid in instruction. I'm still working on it. I'm writing right now. Um, like I said, we're mapping green spaces in Lubbock and testing and refining the procedure. You can, with, Field papers, you can make one page, you can make 50 pages. I haven't really tested the upper bounds of it yet. So I'm t tweaking and trying to test the procedure with fewer papers, better papers, trying different browsers, and making sure we have a tried and true effective way of making this work. Um, and I'm ensuring quality work, and it will be completed shortly. So sorry, it's taking me a little while, but hang uh, hang out for that. And also, I've talked with Rory and Adele. I'm going to add some updates in the future 
as the process gets a little bit better and if we finally do crack how to make it work in some other more popular browsers but as for our project like this was the original map of wagner park where i took it for that initial uh, trip with my wife and my daughter uh, decently mapped but th there's not very many details here and i really have to tip my hat to um Kevin James, TTU alumni and former youth mappers, he has mapped out a lot of the trees in Lubbock. And from, for me, that was easy. I could just go back and like write, write out what they were. But this is the before picture, not completely adequately mapped. And I came through after our assignment and really made note of even like where you can get your dog poop bags at and where you can throw those away at, where you can find the rule sign, the features of the park if it's lit. Um, there's a wealth of data here that uh, is can all be expressed with an open street map. And field paper is really allows you to take those notes in and like I said just upload it and do it and it works in a variety of lighting conditions which you can see from this next one the image is completely different but it worked pretty well this is from our tree mapping I made note of all the tree species in that same park and we had a blast doing that it's really effective and uh, yeah stay tuned if I'll have that out shortly and we appreciate your patience on it and thank you for listening to our presentation I don't know if we have any time for questions but at the end we'll be glad to answer any of them thank you guys thank you Thank you, Willem and Jesse. Those were fantastic presentations. Uh, the work that you've done with your Youth Mappers chapter at TTU has been so impressive. Um, you are the first uh, folks that I've heard of who have used Twitch for mapathons, and it, I mean, the statistics really blew me away. Um, so you've accomplished so much in the past couple of months, and uh, your network focused projects are also extremely great. Um, thank you, Jesse, for working on the um, OpenStreetMap wiki documentation for youth mappers. That's a really important way for our chapters to connect with the local OpenStreetMap communities. And Willem, the field papers exercise and documentation is also an invaluable resource for the network. Um, you can even see in the chat that uh, folks at Vassar are thinking of using field papers for their own local mapping. So um, we actually did hit 15 minutes already. So I'm going to pass it over to um, Alyssa and Andrew from Vassar to present. But um, if anyone has questions for Willem and Jesse, in the, um, please put them in the chat and we'll ask them at the end. Um, so yeah, take it away, Alyssa and Andrew. And please stop sharing your screen, Willem. Oh, I'm muted, sorry. <laughs> um, hi, can you see this? Yes, we can. Okay, cool. Um, well, I don't know how to follow up that last one. Um, great job, Jesse and Willem, but hi. <laughs> um, I'm Andrew, and I am a sophomore at Bazaar College. And I, oh, and, and with Alyssa Chen, we are the um, Bazaar um, Youth Mappers interns. So first we'll talk to you about our chapter focus project and then we'll move on to our network projects. So the first thing I wanted to do was make an Instagram page for Hudson Valley Mappers, which is our local Youth Mappers chapter. Um, it was founded in 2018, so it's a pretty recent chapter, and we're still pretty small. We have about six regular members. So I wanted to create an Instagram page to increase our publicity and try to get more people to join. So I made this Instagram account, and I post to it regularly. I show our events. Um, I have a little bit about our history on it. Um, our handle is HVMBasser, which I'll type in the chat after I'm done presenting. So um, we, as of now, we have, I think, about 105 followers. And from the Instagram page alone, we've got two new people on our mailing list. So I believe it's been pretty successful so far. And I definitely enjoy made it. I definitely enjoy making it. and. I plan to maintain it in the future, too. Um, a little bit about Hudson Valley Mappers. Um, the pre our president is Ben Bachman, and our vice president is Stephanie Ingraldi. And we do a good job at coordinating with local organizations in Poughkeepsie, New York, which is where Vassar is. Um, in the past, we coordinated with Hudson River Housing, which is a housing non local housing nonprofit, and No Child Left Inside, which is a program that works with school students. 
And we and recently we also made a COVID relief map for Dutchess County, which details um, restaurants that were open during the lockdown, as well as grocery stores, clinics, hospitals, food banks, etc. And that inspired and those collaborations inspired Alyssa and I to make a new um, connection with another local organization called Celebrating the African Spirit. This is a local nonprofit that honors the legacy of Africans and their descendants in Poughkeepsie. They're um, aligned with the Dutchess County Historical Society, and they are in a lot of ways in charge of the, of the signs that go up in Poughkeepsie that show the um, historical landmarks. And we wanted to make a digital walking trail in Poughkeepsie that shows significant areas of black history, which tends to be ignored in the major historical discussions. But we we'll, but we wanted to talk about why Poughkeepsie is a major center for black history in the Hudson Valley and why it's significant in, in the country as a whole in the history of African-Americans and civil rights. So after an introductory meeting between Hudson Valley mappers and CAS, we created a we decided to help them make a Poughkeepsie Black History walking trail using a program called ArcGIS Story Maps. And we thought that they would align well with our mission because um, our because Hudson Valley Mappers goals are community-based mapping and outreach, and their goals are also community-based outreach. And to and to um, increase visibility to um, oppressed peoples and people of color. And I'll show you our story map on the next slide, but we also want to give a lot of credit to um, Bill Jeffway, who created the Poughkeepsie Equality Trail, and he told us a lot, a lot about different events in Poughkeepsie that are significant, and that we put in our map. So here's our walking trail. It's about 95% done, so we, it just needs a little bit of editing, and then we'll show it to, to cast very soon. But it starts in the upper left-hand corner. That's Upper Landing Park, which was where the um, the slaves in Poughkeepsie landed in the um, in the 17th and 18th century because New York was used to be a slave state until around 1827, which is when slavery was um, gradually abolished. So the slaves would land there, and and then and then we'd walk up to Main Street, which is where a lot of other sites happened, including a slave burial ground that's still on Mark, and then it would end in the upper right-hand corner near the Poughkeepsie Post Office. And then the green line is an optional route on the way back. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so yes, um, really the inspiration for this was the, the collaboration between what mapping can do, like the power of mapping in you know, telling stories, storytelling, and, and also using that power to tell stories that are untold and often unheard of, not taught in, in modern history textbooks. Um, and so the format of our story map is that we have that walking um, trail to kind of um, give Poughkeepsie res residents a sense of where, they, where they're going, where these places are. And to follow that, um, we have also like a location, exact location option, and we can insert a search bar. Um, but below that, we kind of have a series of these um, sites and also captions, images, photo galleries, and descriptions of why these places are significant. Like what kind of history are we, is CAS trying to um, use to educate um, people of Poughkeepsie about what's, what's not um, usually um, towed. And on the top here, we have Upper Landing Park and we have two different pictures from the 19th and 20th centuries. And as Andrew said, this was, Upper Landing was the area where um, development of Poughkeepsie first began, where these ships sailing from New York City would come off and unload cargo, unload um, uh, slave owners and their slaves, uh, where they started to settle down here. Um, and there's a lot of history, um, well, not a lot, but like we really had to search for this history of slaves working on these ships and and um, going in and out of Upper Landing. And to this day, like Upper Landing Park isn't designated to um, those African-Americans who helped build Kipsy. Um, it's more so just a park near the walkway over the Hudson. Um, Vassar students are brought there. Um, 
but overall like this is just a part of history that's forgotten and in the bottom here we have Gay Spolin um, who's a prominent black Poughkeepsie native um, and he was a trailblazer of many firsts as the black first black lawyer in the county first black graduate of Williams College first black president of Dutchess County Bar Association and it keeps going on and why we think he's so important other than like Dutchess um, County Historical Association um, highlighting his family's um, his family's legacy is the fact that he graduated from local Poughkeepsie High School and that a lot of the students um, at Poughkeepsie High School today are very underserved or just don't have like as much infrastructure as their partners in suburban Arlington and this really helps to empower those students that CAS um, is trying to reach out to and they're in, in conversation with um, with programs to empower youth and we just we just think that like these are some things that they would want to encounter when walking through Poughkeepsie and of course there's an educational component um, where CAST um, is trying to it plans on using these walking tours so our um, story map and also future story maps that we may make um, to lead self or guided outdoor walking tours with local community members and students. Um, and this would not only highlight black representation, in local history, um, but they're also trying to inspire youth to come up with what kind of memorials in the city they'd like to see and um, have their input in that. Um, we also plan on engaging students in exploring history through primary resources because a lot of the resources we had to use for making the story map was based on newspapers, clippings, and primary resources because this is this is just very like forgotten history. Um, for example, on the right, you have on the bottom um, that most newspapers in Poughkeepsie look like this, where the advertisements um, they they got a lot of the revenue um, based on. Uh, the slave market so the buying and selling of slaves like they would be marketed on the newspapers whereas on the top Poughkeepsie Eagle News was the first anti-slavery newspaper and that's where you know prominent figures like Gaius Bolin, Frederick Douglass would appear and debating over abolition um, and these things and you know that's that's not something that um, these this other the other alternative perspective is, is not really considered when we're talking about history and textbooks um, and we think that by uh, helping cast engage with youth and, and also Poughkeepsie residents maybe in the future they can contribute their own research to the Dutchess County Historical Society um, celebrating African spirit or open source mapping which we haven't gone into yet um, past this project and some other possible future improvements include a racial equity atlas where we can compile um, the, this type of data and also um, contemporary data um, for these mapping projects. Um, so like a database for more maps to be created. And then also other trails with varying lengths and abilities and themes. But yeah, that's kind of like a little summary of our story map. Thanks, Alyssa. <laughs> um, now I'll, talk, I'll take a little bit to talk about our um, network-based projects. So I did a couple. Uh, my first one was that I wanted to revamp the slide deck that Youth Mappers has. So Youth Mappers, um, a year or two ago, made this slide deck that was meant to advertise our program to um, universities in the Global South. And it was good, but I wanted to add on a couple slides about um, what chapter activities are like, um, how to apply, and some of the different programs we offer. Um, here's some screenshots from that slide deck. Um, I put I put um, definitions of open street map and what a mapathon is. Um, I talked about some of our programs like the research fellowship, the leadership fellowship, um, this internship in a meta kind of way, and the everywhere she maps program. And I also put in a lot of information about applying to become youth mappers chapter, as in the requirements, how to fill out the form, and some of the other documents we need. So I'm hoping that we can send this slide deck to other universities and help our program continue to grow. Speaking of, I also just did some work networking with universities in Southeast Asia. Um, Southeast Asia is a region that is extremely diverse, both culturally and ecologically. 
but Youth Mappers does not have a large presence there. So I reached out to Jean Jeanette Chung, who is a student at Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. And she is currently starting her own chapter of Youth Mappers at NTU. And they're having their first Napathon this week, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I also reached out to Andal Fei, who is the regional ambassador for Southeast Asia, and she is based in the University of Philippines in Diliman and in Kizong City. Um, I hope to continue this as I'm studying abroad at National University of Singapore in spring 2022. So I hope that I get to be a part of Youth Mappers there as well, and hope it helps to expand the network as well. So hopefully I get to run a mapathon with the Jeanette Chung in person. So yeah, that's about it for me. Yeah, and lastly, um, I'll keep this short because this is still in the works. Um, my Youth Mappers blog post about learning Jossum for the first time. Um, I have to say, like, as a coming from a more qualitative background, it was hard <laughs> to learn a lot of these like new geospatial tools for the first time in this internship. So I'm still trying to get a grasp of Jossum. It's it's like the the big big mountain at the end of this internship and um, I'm hoping to like kind of ease up and debunk the myth that it's impossible that it's like only made for certain people um, and super challenging for first-time users um, so I hope to write a blog post about um, you know shortcuts helpful tutorials and tips um, similarity between ID editor and Jossum to make it not seem like a foreign language um, the usefulness of Jossum, the challenges, um, and, and some like very practical things like shortcuts and plugins, um, and hopefully make that as engaging as possible. Um, but yeah, that's it for us. Thank you all for having us. Yeah, thank wow. you. Everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much, Alyssa and Andrew. Do you have anything additional you want to add, Andrew, before we? Oh, take yeah, I'll just put my. Um, uh, Hudson Valley Mappers Instagram in the chat. Okay, awesome. So, Thank you. yeah, I your presentation was uh, fantastic, and this the community geography collaboration you're working on with celebrating the African spirit is so important. And I can see how much work you put into that, building the story map, also doing extensive historical research. So I'm so impressed by that effort, and can't wait to see where that goes. And Thank you as well for um, your network focused um, projects. The slide deck that Andrew put together is extremely useful for Youth Mappers outreach. And it's great that he'll have the opportunity to con hopefully connect with some Youth Mappers in Southeast Asia um, in person during his study abroad experience. And um, Alyssa, we're really looking forward to your Jossum blog post too. I think that'll be a great resource for um, beginner Jossum users. So with that, I think we could we're just about at 15 minutes now. If we want like one question that um, Alyssa and Andrew could take before we move on to Penn State. Question or comment for them. Uh, Mary Ann has her hand raised. But I was muted. Um, thank you, that was really great. So there's a whole bunch of things. I feel like there was a lot of ideas you had for future collaborations like with the Celebrating the African Spirit. If you had to give us one directive or two, what would those be, the first next steps we should do? Hmm, well, we're still looking for people to lead the tour. Yeah, I mean, we are planning to like go back and forth with Cass and also you, <laughs> our faculty advisor, um, to go, go over what we've had, what we've come up with for our draft, and to make any edits, recommendations, and then um, ask Cass how they would like to apply this to like their current youth programs and um, plans to build memorials in Poughkeepsie um, and what kind of maps they would they would like to see more of. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we also maybe want in the future want to do some original research so we can find more places that we can put in our map that aren't well known. Ben, did you have a quick comment? Yeah, just a very quick comment saying like, I know for me, using OpenStreetMap doesn't always seem like a, um, it seems like a this is what's here now kind of tool. Um, but a lot of this work that I think Alyssa and Andrew have done is a little bit more of like historical or kind of visionary. 
Um, and so just kind of tossing that out there as like, uh, you know, how can OSM and open source mapping incorporate that kind of thing? Yeah, that's a great point, Ben. Thank you. All right. Um, I want to make sure we have time to hear from our last two interns, uh, Thomas and Noah from Penn State. So I'll pass it over to them. Yeah, thanks, Adele. Uh, I'm going to, I'll present mine. Um, I talked about um, the, I think I'm sharing that now. So um, for my chapter, uh, I talked about revitalizing the GIS coalition at Penn State. Um, so the GIS coalition is uh, Penn State's Youth Mappers chapter. Um, is a professional oriented club um, tasked with connecting students with interest in GIS. Um, previously provided workshops, um, internship postings, uh, and other types of experiences, um, trying to get just more people, uh, more people involved with GIS and um, kind of explaining what it is. Um, but at the beginning of the semester, um, the GIS coalition was really quiet. Um, a lot of the previous members had graduated. Um, there's not a lot of activity planned, um, as well as the semester previously. Um, and that's because of the pandemic. Um, it was hard for people coming into the geography and GIS to find places where they could really connect with their peers and um, just get more experience that's really necessary um, in college. Um, so our plan was, uh, after electing a new executive board, um, the president and I, uh, Ryan Armani, established a plan to get the club back up and running uh, with a lot of help from the previous secretary, Harman Singh, who is also graduating this semester. Um, we established our goals back in February to, first of all, acquire a solid member base um, and then host events and obviously have fun doing it uh, and get people excited about geography and GIS and OpenStreetMap. So over the course of the semester, um, we had 35 students join our club, um, got them on our email list in a couple group chats. Uh, we hosted multiple events, um, such as our speaker event with Tommy Charles and a Mapathon event. We were part of the one with Texas Tech. We were happy to hop on that for a little bit. Um, we also had a second one that Thomas will talk about next. Um, and we we're also really fortunate to have a lot of fun. Um, I was extremely fortunate to be on campus this semester um, in my apartment, but still close. So I was able to meet a couple of the, meet with the exec board a lot and we got really tight um, and a majority of the members through a couple of general meetings and uh, things like that. So a little bit about our speaker event. Um, we were able to talk with Tommy Charles, who is the Youth Mappers Ambassador from Sierra Leone. Uh, he spoke to our club for a little bit for a little over an hour about his experiences uh, and the importance of GIS data. Um, what I really wanted out of this was uh, helping to show members what OpenStreetMap is and what it is capable of, um, and how much of an impact geospatial data makes um, to these types of communities, these rural villages in Africa, um, Indonesia, places like that, because. Here, when you're looking at your phone, you pull up a map real quick, you find the nearest Taco Bell, uh, you don't really think about it. But in places like this, where their homes aren't even on a map, and half of the time they might not even have the electricity to look at a map or anything like that. Um, I wanted to show a lot of these new members that were coming to me, um, were unsure about GIS, really didn't have any experience with it, were intimidated by it. Um, I wanted to show how it can actually be used and more importantly, how easy it is to use and how simple it is and how much of a big impact that can have uh, from a humanitarian standpoint. Um, so I plan to continue working with the executive board um, um, over the next year. And I really wanna make the GIS uh, coalition a really fun and active youth mappers chapter. Uh, and a hub for geography majors of all sectors to make connections and have a good time. Um, yeah, it was a really um, fun experience. And what I really thought, um, what I really wanted to sell was the accessibility and ease of use 
um, Youth Mappers brings to OpenStreetMap. Um, it was really easy with the Mapathons and Map Roulette, which I'll talk about next. Um, it was really easy to quickly form a community and get people doing um, something that has a huge impact and is honestly a lot of fun. Um, Thomas will talk about our Mapathon. Uh, we also have one planned for Thursday, but that went really well as well. Uh, just a little bit about uh, my network capstone. That's going to be learning Map Roulette. Um, through a video walkthrough, just how to access the website, what it is, um, how to map a task, and then the leaderboard functionality, which ties into that gamification and makes it just a lot more fun. Um, and that will be compiled into a blog post, along with a write-up about how the accessibility and ease of youth mappers in OSM helped our chapter um, revitalize and get people excited about mapping. Um, so with that note, I'll hand off to Thomas to talk a little bit about the Mapathon. All right, awesome. Thanks, Noah. Um, OK, I'll share my PowerPoints. Can you guys see this fun? Yep. OK. All right, sweet. So I'm Thomas Updike, and I did creating a Mapathon in Niger as my chapter-focused capstone. So that's what I'm going to focus on here. So for the project itself, it was using Teach OSM. Sorry to interrupt, Thomas. I think we can only see the um, slides, but not the presentation mode. OK. Um, let me do, but not the presentation mode. Did Willem do it? Because Willem was using uh, slideshow. Yeah, Rory is saying in the chat that you should present your entire screen. Oh, OK. Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, entire screen. OK. OK, is this better now? Yes, thank you. All right, thanks for letting me know. <laughs> OK, so the project itself, it was using Teach OSM. And that's really similar to the HOT website, which we used a lot during our weekly homework assignments and stuff like that. But um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's very similar to HOT, but uh, Rory, uh, actually gave us the the project links for this project, so he helped us a lot with deciding what to do for this Mapathon. Um, and the project itself is called Power Mapping in Niger, which is a country in Western Africa. And so it's called Power Mapping in Niger because lots of rural villages and communities there, they lack access to reliable electricity. And that touches upon what Noah was talking about with our speaker, Tommy. He's in Sierra Leone, but they have similar problems in that people don't have access to electricity, um, which is a major problem there because uh, electricity helps in all sorts of ways. But um, so, yeah, the goal of the project was to map houses and roads using the Maxar premium imagery. and the point of that was so that um, people like researchers at uh, universities like the Arizona State University, they can use that OpenStreetMap data so that they can understand the existing infrastructure, uh, electric infrastructure, and as well as how to implement mini grids for people in these rural communities. Um, and so the, the data itself uh can also be used for um many grid developers national utilities and other energy stakeholders in the country to really advance um mini grid development in those rural communities and so for the mapping itself like making the buildings helps to let people know uh like who has a lack of electricity just based off 
making that building, you'd be able to know that people live there and they don't have access to electricity because it's such a rural community. But, and then also adding the roads uh, was part of the goal because that can show where to put power lines um, as well as where power lines can be, felt, can be found. So for networking this Mapathon, I made this poster on the right here, and it just is trying to bring in new people, uh, saying it's beginner friendly and whatnot, gives all the details there. And so we took that poster, we posted it in our, our club's group chat, and then I sent an email with the poster and invite to our undergrad listserv, which is about 145 students in the geography department. And then the Mapathon was also added to the geography events calendar by people in the geography department. And then um, it was cool that uh, Dara reached out to us, to, to me on the Slack channel for our internship. and said, uh, asked if I wanted it to be added to the official Youth Mappers calendar. And I was like, yeah, why not? Um, and then Willem helped a lot as well. He was at our event and he gave additional broadcasting from their Twitch stream. He was streaming it while he was mapping with us. And he was also, he said he was posting about it on their Facebook page. So that was really nice of him. So for what the outcomes were of this project, we were able to complete two whole, uh, two whole project tasks. So all of these squares were mapped. Um, we, there was a third project linked. We only got about halfway through that. I just chose to focus on these completely finished project links. But um, yeah, so for, for the first one, we had 81 change sets with over 500 map edits. Uh, there was almost 200 buildings mapped, and there's about 52 kilometers of roads mapped. And then there were 62 change sets in the other one, and over 200 buildings mapped with 26 kilometers of roads mapped. And at the event, similar to Jesse and Willem's event, we introduced how to map and for the first like 15 minutes or so. And I just tried to answer any questions for people that were just using ID editor for the first time. And so to show kind of the breakdown of the user experience level for these project tasks, you can see that most people are beginner mappers, pretty much like 75%. Um, and you can also see in those bar charts in the bottom with less than a month, that's over 70% of the mappers that were doing this task. So yeah, that's a bit more statistics there. Thomas and, is, sorry to interrupt, but yeah. Thomas is understanding it a little bit here. <laughs> At first, our first Mapathon, he did a really good job. Um, probably the first 20 minutes, um, just walking people through how to get set up, how to map the buildings, how to pick the imagery, probably everything that there was probably an issue with about everything and he was able to walk everybody through it. Um, over Zoom, um, having people share their screens and do all this, it was, it was tough, but yeah, um, got it all done. And it was really cool, it ended, ended really great. We were really excited about that. Yeah, we thanks Noah. Yeah, we were really impressed that we got these two whole um, regions mapped with only like fifteen people there. Um, yeah, and then moving on um, for my own network capstone, this was going to be making a video tutorial on pretty much from the perspective of a beginner mapper. So I would show you how to choose a beginner task on the hot website and you specifically using ID editor. And then I would introduce people to how to make a building, how roads should be classified, 
um, how the imagery should be aligned, if at all, and any other kind of beginner tasks there. And then I was just going to write up a blog post about my own experience with using Hot during this internship and include that video tutorial. And then it could be posted on the Eve Mappers blog page, which is what is in the background here. And ideally, that would be a, a source for beginner mappers to go to. And they could just watch that video probably only like five minutes, less than five minutes, um, and know what to do and how to get started on Hot with ID Editor. And yeah, I'm, I'm working on that right now. So still in the process. But that's, uh, that's my two capstones. Thanks. Wow, thank you, Thomas and Noah. Those were outstanding presentations. And you have accomplished so much in terms of revitalizing um, your Youth Mappers chapter and recruiting new members. Um, it's very impressive. Uh, we were so happy to hear about your collaboration um, with Tommy Charles from Sierra Leone. We're, we're always excited about um, cross-chapter links, and it sounds like that was a very informative event for your chapter. Um, and also, yes, congratulations um, on the uh, Niger Power Mapping Mapathon. It sounds like that went extremely well. Um, so you, you both have a lot to be proud of. Um, I see that uh, Carrie has raised her hand. So yeah, I'll pass it over to you. Sure, I'm just so impressed. You guys, every single one of these projects is embodying the very purpose of why we created Youth Mappers in the first place. You are connecting and you are defining the world by mapping it. And I'm so proud. I, every one of your projects, I was glued to hearing about it. I feel like I have a connection almost to every single one from having visited Lubbock, Texas when TTU became one of the founding members to having been a Peace Corps volunteer in Niger. I can't wait now to take the tour in Poughkeepsie. I've never been to Poughkeepsie, but I can't wait to go and take it. Every single thing, I just, I'm so impressed. And I just wanted to say, fantastic job. Thank you so much, Carrie. Uh, Rory, would you like to share any closing remarks? Now, I don't think I can put it any better than Carrie did. Um, I was, you know, I, I've seen you guys, I knew you got what you guys were doing for weeks now, and I was still glued to the screens during your presentations and um, seeing all the great work you did and um, how you exceeded, uh, you know, even my wildest ex expectations. So great job, everyone. Um, I know there's still um, a lot of you still have a little loose ends to tie up. Um, so don't um, forget about that, even though we're not going to be meeting anymore. But also stay in touch um, and reach out. Um, I'm sure the, the uh, mentors from the Geo Center would love to hear from you and um, keep track of what you guys are up to. Thanks again. Yeah, it's been so much fun working with um, the six of you this semester. Rory and I are going to miss you a lot. Um, personally, I always looked forward to our weekly calls. Um, and yeah, just a really good group. Um, we have a couple minutes left. Anyone else want to share any closing remarks or questions? Marianne, did you raise your hand again? <laughs> I did. I just want to say that um, I like everybody's doing really great work. Um, we are so proud of Adele, who is one of our own. So I just want to say shout out to Adele. And also thank you to everybody who kept this whole program going. I mean, it's super fun to see what's going on, and it's really inspirational. And I'm just really happy to see students doing these projects. So thank you. Thank you, Marianne. Yeah, it's so special in this video call for me to see my two worlds of Vassar and <laughs> USAID collide. So I'm really enjoying it. Um, Me too. <laughs> any other uh, remarks? I guess my other remark would be, um, I can't wait to see how these projects continue to evolve, especially obviously the one that's close to home. But I think that these lay really nice groundwork for ongoing 
work, and, and I just find that really exciting as well, so that's great. Yeah, thank you, Marianne. I also look forward to seeing the projects continue. On um, Speaking of projects continuing, uh, Earth Day in two days, Penn State and Texas Tech were having a mapathon. Uh, we're throwing it together kind of last minute, but thankfully we're pretty good at this now. We can we can make it happen. Vassar, we'd love to have you guys. Uh, the collaborative spirit, as you guys said, it's important. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for that. Thank you guys. You're all invited. You are all invited. Well, thank you, everyone. We're just at time now. So um, thank you for these amazing presentations. Um, really enjoyed every single one of you um, presenting. And yeah, I look forward to continuing to work together.